Hey, this is B from Kongs R Us, and I just got my RK1 Up Class of 81 Deluxe Cabinet, and the only thing that's really wrong with it is the fact that the coin doors aren't lit up. So we're gonna do a full tutorial on how to light up the coin doors and create your own kit to be able to mod it right after this. Now you can see in my arcade collection that I have all of my other arcades behind me lit up and the majority of these kits I actually use from a buddy of mine, Retro530 aka Laramie Griffith does a great job providing a turnkey solution to light up your coin doors. It's a $21 kit for two buttons to light up and it can be red or yellow depending on the cabinet that you have. This is shipped to you. $21 for the two coin or for the four coin slot version here. Uh, this is a pre-made version that you can just plug in you do have to do some drilling into your cabinet and we'll go over some of those solutions for you um, but if you have a bunch of cabinets that you want to light up on your own i'm going to show you in this tutorial how to go over all these parts and make your own kit right now so the first place i'm going to take you to is uh diy retro diy retro is one of the places where i get a lot of my arcade parts for various mod projects but here are the different supplies that you're going to need for this mod first thing you're going to need are a couple of these led bulb holders right so these bulb holders they're 30 cents each that you can get them in bulk from diy retro here so if you got only two cap uh you know two coins it would be 60 cents here Next, you're going to need the bulbs, right? Bulbs are 25 cents each. So if you're getting two red bulbs, that would be, you know, 55 cents for each set that's here. The other thing that you're going to need is a power wiring harness. So I do recommend getting this version of the power wiring harness. Uh, it's $10 for one set, but it has 16 different connectors to it. And so if you are doing, uh, you know, two uh, buttons, you're pretty much going to be using uh, you know, you have up to 16 different LED buttons that you can light up. So one of these $10 kits can light up 16 different buttons that you have um, for your coin door slot. So just one of these will go a long way. So those are all the parts that you're going to need. The other things that you're going to need potentially as well is a USB adapter. So you can go to Amazon and purchase one like this on your own to be able to have the little ends sticking out. But if you are around your house and you're kind of like me, um, I have a ton of these different USB cables here just lying around my house. And so I'm just going to use these USB cables here and we're going to get into the tutorial. All right, so now that we have the parts uh, in terms of what parts you're going to need, what tools are you going to need to be able to do this as well? So to do any sort of wire splicing modding, uh, this is my uh, wire cutter that I use for a lot of my projects. This vice grip has kind of a cutter to be able to kind of cut the wires here as well as the different um, terminals to be able to cut the various size wires that you have here. So this is one of my go-to favorite, favorite um, tools in my my collection here. Um, the other thing that's really handy to have if you're not using electrical tape um, is to use some heat shrinking tubes so that you can tie off all the ends together once you attach the USB cable. So heat shrinking tube is really nice and of course if you're using heat shrinking tubes I have a handy heat gun here. You could alternatively use electrical tape if you want to but those are the tools you're going to need for this tutorial as well. All right, let's get into modding the wire splicing thing. So, I mean, these terminals here are first and foremost, the easiest things to put together. You're just gonna stick your bulb in here uh, in a certain direction that you want to. Uh, it kind of doesn't matter because you could always flip the cables around afterwards. But once you put this bulb into this connector slot, you can set these aside. And now we're gonna create the connectors to your USB wire. Now, again, this is that uh, power wire harness that has 16 different cables to it. This is meant for you to daisy chain a bunch of LEDs together using this uh, 3.5 millimeter to um, uh, five mil, I forget the size of it here, but this is a pretty much a, um, a 12 volt adapter so that you can plug all this stuff into. We're not gonna be using this at all. We're pretty much just using the daisy chain parts here so that you can daisy chain two of these together and then uh, you know go to the next one. So I have some leftover parts here from a different mod that I was doing. So I'm just gonna use you know two black wires as well as two yellow wires to mod these up and we're gonna splice that into this USB cable here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, my ends here these are the ends that are going to go into my usb cable and then i'm going to make sure that i have one and then two these two ends are going to go into my cables here so i'm just going to cut these here and we're not going to be using these extra bits anymore so i'm just going to cut that move it to the side and then here is my black one 
just like this. All right, so we have our two black ends that we're gonna do for our negative and then two yellow ends, which we're gonna do for our positive end here. So we're going to splice these into the USB cable here, and then these ends are gonna plug into our set right here. All right, now let's work with our USB cable here. If you had that one version from Amazon that I showed you earlier, you'd already have the wire end spliced and open and bare, and you pretty much just have to splice the positive wire uh, to the yellow one and the negative wire black to the black one. And that's pretty much it. Um, so otherwise, if you have a spare USB cable, I have tons of these around my house. We're just gonna cut off the end and we're gonna kind of expose the wires here and see what we have here. So depending on the cable that you use for your USB cable, you might have a number of wires in here because some of them don't just do power, some of them also do data as well. So here I'm opening up my USB cable and I have perfectly here just two bare wires. One of them is red, one of them is black. So this is perfect. This was a USB-A to USB-C uh, cable I had here. This is just, I don't know what this was for, but we're gonna just you know toss this to the side. And now we're just gonna strip some of the bare wire here using our wire stripper. So pretty much it's gonna maybe do half an inch bare wire on one side. I'm gonna do the other side half an inch or so just to expose enough wire on both cables. Okay, now we're gonna do the same for our black cable and our red yellow cable on this side. Very, very simple, about a half inch or so. Exposed wire here, half inch or so, exposed wire here. All right, so now that our wires are bare, we're gonna start splicing them together. So to splice them together, normally I like to use heat shrink tube. Now this is a heat shrink tube that's on Amazon. Uh, you know, this kit itself, um, you know, the whole kit has various size tubes here. Um, so you have these tubes here that I think will fit nicely. These might be the smallest size tubes here that could fit nicely as well. But this whole kit, I, I like to have it just in case for a lot of different projects. I think I'll leave a link in the description to this kit as well. Um, so here you can pretty much just slip on um, one of the heat shrink tubes to the individual wire terminal here for one. Let's do the black one on this side. Um, you might not even need this whole length of the heat shrink tube. Sometimes I like to cut my heat shrink tubes in half and then work it from there. Um, so the other thing before we tie everything together as well, I'm gonna also do just one final heat shrink tube just because I have so many of these. One more that's a little bit larger that's gonna go over everything just to make sure that it's nice and secure. Okay, so I'm gonna stick this one that's a little bit larger over this one and so that we're gonna we're gonna tie everything together so I put your heat shrink down tube before you start twisting everything together all right now let's go ahead and start twisting our cables together this is the black cable which is the negative ground cable here when I like to twist I like to line up my two uh, wires that I'm splicing together kind of straight up together and holding them with one finger and then I'm gonna start to split them out like a Y just like that and then I'm going to start twisting them so they kind of start getting twisted and nice and tight. So this is how I splice wires. So once that's nice and tight together, now I'm going to put it out, fold that over down and slip my heat shrink tube over just like that. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for our yellow to the red wire, which is the positive one. So again, I'm going to hold it, little Y, start twisting the cables together just like that we're gonna slip the cover over and that's pretty much it we're gonna heat shrink that together and then the last thing once those are heat shrink together then I'll put this one over and heat shrink it all together as well so let's go ahead and do that now all right I just uh, did some heat shrink for my first two cables there and now I'm going to take my bigger one and just cover it just as another extra kind of precaution so that it provides a little bit more support. All right, now one tip that I didn't do that I would normally would recommend before you do any heat shrinking is to actually test the USB connections with your LED bulb just to make sure that the wires and everything in your splicing is good before you heat shrink it. I've done a lot of heat shrinking and wire splicing in my day, so I skipped that step, but I highly recommend testing it out. So let's go ahead and test it out right now. 
All right, so I just plugged in my USB cable into my PC and that should give us enough power to be able to power up these LED strips here. Um, and so you're just gonna pick one side and start kind of wiring up one side to the positive uh, yellow side and the other side to the black side there. And if it doesn't light up, then I probably need to swap these around. So that's it, that's all you gotta do. Just take them off, swap them to the other side. And there it is, it's now lit up. That's it, boom. So now the LED is lit up. Uh, that's gonna be enough power that you're gonna draw from the PCB of your arcade window cabinet to light up your LED strip. And now these are daisy chained, right? And so I have my second cable that's here. This is gonna plug into your second monitor, or so your second coin, second monitor, second coin slot, second coin slot, second LED bulb. What am I saying? All right, there it is. So now we have our two LED bulbs that are plugged in perfectly like so. Uh, you wanna make sure that if these wires are a little bit loose or so, you might wanna just clamp them down a little bit. But now that these are both tested, we can go ahead and go with the installation into our cabinet and I'll show you how to do that right now. So to install that light up coin door kit, we are going to need to drill some holes. So you're gonna need a drill bit like this. Uh, you can use any type of drill bit, that's fine, but you're going to need also a 3 8 inch uh, drill bit, which is that size there. This is just the kit that I have. So you can use any old drill bit set that you have. This is gonna, we're gonna need to drill a hole into your cabinet. So the best way to mark the perfect drill spot is to remove the coin door completely. Then we're gonna actually remove those little buttons there by unscrewing those portions, taking it off the coin door, and then when we put it on top of your cabinet, you're gonna see the perfect place to drill the holes. Here you can see the drills line up perfectly, but here's a quick tip. When you're drilling, put some blue tape on the drill part so when you drill it, you can peel it off. It'll be nice and clean. Now you're ready for installation. All right, now that we've drilled out our holes for the front of the cabinet and we've reinstalled our um, coin door slot. We're going to go ahead and install the kits that we just made earlier into your cabinet. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you completely power down your cabinets. You might want to even unplug the power cable completely from the cabinet. Make sure that there's no power going into it. The first thing we're going to do is try to install the USB-A slot into your PCB. Now this is probably one of the harder things to do because the PCB is in a little bit of an awkward space since it's on the mount monitor slanted. You can't really see where the USB-A slot is. So we're just gonna try to sneak in there and get it nice and attached fairly easily. All right, so our USB-A slot is attached. Now we're gonna take our LEDs that we made earlier and these should fit perfectly into the 3 8 drill bit that we had earlier before. So we're just gonna stick it in there on one side, stick it on the, on the other side, uh, and that's pretty much it. If you want to, you can take some extra precaution and tape it down, uh, you know, using some Gorilla tape or anything else just to kind of hold it in place, but you really don't need to unless you're planning on moving the cabinet a lot. This is pretty much it, and you'll be able to turn it on. So let's go ahead and power everything up and test it out. All right, we have our cab turned around and let's go ahead and flip the power switch on our class of 81 cabinet. And as soon as we turn on the power switch, the PCB is gonna turn on and the coin doors are all lit up now. So that looks fantastic. Let me turn off the light so you can see how gorgeous it is all lit up here. A uh, very, very simple mod. Again, if you don't wanna go through the hassle, highly recommend Retro 530. But if you have some of the tools and some of that splicing know-how, you can do this on your own and light up all of your cabinets that have these coin doors. I really do hope that Arcade went up would include more of these kits to light up the coin doors on, uh, you know, with the cabinets. It just makes it that much more illuminated and a little bit more premium. So that's all for this video. Hopefully, if you liked it, please consider giving a subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time. Thanks.